Alright, here's the deal. You want to make a game, but if you're new to Unity, you're probably thinking, where do I even start? Don't worry, I've got you covered. In this lesson, we're setting up your project, building a maze, and dropping in a player who can move around. By the end of this, you'll go from a blank screen to something you can actually walk through. No fluff, no waste of time, let's make it happen. This game is going to be a simple maze runner where your goal is to collect a number of orbs. We're going to use 15 and you're also going to be timed. The goal is to collect as many orbs as possible and get to the end of the maze in the shortest amount of time. So then you have to decide if you want to collect all the orbs or you just want to get to the maze at the end. Now there's not going to be a real point system, but at the end of this, if you want to continue with the project, you can go on and edit it. So let's get started. So step one, set up Unity. If you don't have Unity Hub, download it. Seriously, pause the video and go grab it. Select the 3D template. It's simple and perfect for what we're doing. Name your project, Escape the Maze. Pick a folder to save it and hit create. All resources that are not shown in the video will be available linked in the classroom page. When Unity loads, you'll see an empty scene. It's boring right now, but stick with me. We're about to change that. So let's build the maze. Here's the first step. Start with the floor. In the hierarchy on the left, right click, go to 3D object and select plane. This is your floor. Rename it floor. Why? Because clean projects save you time later. In the inspector on the right, change the scale to something that fits like 10, 1, 10. This makes the floor 10 times larger, giving us plenty of space to build the maze. If your floor is not positioned at 0, 0, 0, you can position it now. This makes for centering and setting everything up later easier. Okay, now to add the walls. Right click in the hierarchy on the left, go to 3D object and select cube. This is your wall. Rename it wall. In the inspector, change the scale to 1, 2, 1 to start and see the size. We can adjust this later. This makes it tall enough to block the player but not ridiculously big. An easy trick for setting up the maze that I used was to import a maze PNG. All you have to do is find a PNG or make one and drag it into your asset folder. Once there, you can set it up as a 2D sprite and just drag it onto your floor and it will attach. This will make placing the walls easier and we won't have to think about where to place them or how large or long to make them. So now take your wall that you created and bring it over to one of the edge walls. Now we're going to stretch the scale out to match the size of the maze that we put on the floor. Now remember it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a quick, easy, simple first game for you to learn. So you can either adjust the scale on the right in the inspector or you can use the scale tab on the left near the hierarchy and drag with your mouse. I use both. To navigate around the scene in Unity, you right click, hold the right mouse button and use the WASD keys to navigate around. You can also hold the shift key down and it will speed up. Uh, it's like a sprint, it'll speed up your movement. You can also adjust your movement speed by scrolling up and down on your mouse. So you can see right now there is a character and a camera in there. This was from a previous version I was creating where I was going to create my own character, but I decided we're going to go with a character controller just to get the game done quicker and just show you the basics. So eventually this will be deleted and we'll add another one. So just don't worry about if you don't have a character or a pill in your scene right now. Next, we're going to import the unity input system go to the window tab and go down to package manager then we're going to go to the unity tab and then we'll search input system and you'll hit download and import when we import the unity input system your unity browser might want to restart so if it does just let it now this might take some time so it might take longer so I'm gonna skip ahead. Next we're going to get the Unity Starter Asset Character and you can see it here in the Unity Asset Store. It's free, all you have to do is add it to your library and then you can open it up directly into Unity and then import it the same way we did the input system. This will make setting up the project a lot quicker. The uh, character controller comes with all the controls built in, jumping, moving, looking, camera and everything. It saves a lot of time. On this pop-up import window, just import everything on there, don't worry about it. It's everything that is necessary and needed, so don't uncheck anything. Unity makes this part easy. Instead of coding a player controller from scratch, we're using the Starter Assets Character Controller URP package. It's pre-built, it works, and it saves us a ton of time. So, to get the asset, we're going to go into the sample scene. I find this is the simplest way because it's typically set up the best. Go to the sample scene and all you have to do is grab them from the hierarchy and drag them into your asset folder 
and then select create original prefab. This will allow us to use them in any scene. Okay, now we're back in our main scene and we're going to delete that character that I had that you don't have to worry about. Now that we have the asset prefab, the character prefab from the sample scene, we can take it from the asset folder and just drag it into our scene. So we can also take the player follow camera and drag that in and the main camera. This will give us all the necessary logic we need to have a moving character. So we hit play as the button at the top, it allows us to play the scene. So as you can see, we can move the character around, but the camera is not moving with it. Why? That's because we did not attach the camera to the character. Just because we brought it into the scene doesn't mean we brought everything in properly. As we'll see, the player capsule, which is the player, has a player camera root. Player follow camera has a follow and look at uh, input for the cinema machine virtual camera. We want to attach the player camera root to that location. Don't forget to delete the original main camera that was in the scene, the one with the white text. So now, as you can see, we can move around and we can use the mouse to move the camera around and look around. So now our character is set up. It's that simple. Okay, now that we have a wall in place and the character set up, let's finish setting up the mace. So with the character in place, we can adjust the height of the walls. We'll get a better understanding of what scale we're working with. You don't want a maze where you can see over the whole thing. So you want it to be a pretty tall wall. It gives the character a sense of unknowing what's around the corner and kind of being trapped. So I'm just manually scaling it and dragging it around just to feel. It doesn't have to be perfect like I said before. Next we're going to right click in the hierarchy again and we're gonna create an empty object. This object is basically gonna be an empty folder where we're gonna store all the walls. So we'll call it walls. And we can go ahead and center it at zero, 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 and then place the original wall, the first wall we had inside of it by dragging it over it. Now to create the rest of the walls. So an easy way to duplicate an object in Unity is Control D. All you have to do is click the object in the hierarchy and control D and it will make a second copy of it. And you take that and you just drag it over to the other side. And then we're gonna do this over and over again. We're gonna control D and rotate and control D and rotate and then control D and scale. And that's basically what we're going to do. Make a copy and a copy and a copy of all the walls and scale it down and rotate to the proper size to match the pattern on the floor. So I'm going to speed this up. You get the gist of it. All you have to do is control D to copy, rotate and scale to match the pattern on the floor. It's that simple. Okay, so if you notice my lighting has changed slightly. Well, at the top of the scene, there is a light bulb and all you have to do is toggle that on and off. I just did that because it was a little easier to look at and see as I was editing. We'll toggle back on in a bit. Now that we've created the whole level, let's test it out. As you can see, the player can walk through it. All the walls look great. The floor looks great. The height of the walls is great. Yeah, I think this is going to make out to be a great maze. Okay, so we've tested it out. Now let's block the entranceway. I just chose this side. It doesn't matter. Let's block the entranceway so players can't leave the level. And with the walls, the walls come with a collider box. The collider box is an invisible box that allows or blocks the player from leaving the level, basically. Um, it has collision and the player has collision. And when they meet, they stop each other basic idea of walking into a wall. So the final thing we're going to do in lesson one is create an end zone floor. We don't want to just walk off the level. We want something there to walk on. So right now we're going to we're going to right click in the hierarchy, go to 3D object and go to plane. So we create the plane. We're going to drop it down to zero in the Y axis. We're going to bump up the scale to two and we're going to adjust the position. So it's cut, touching right the edge of the maze. So and that's lesson one. You've gone from nothing to a fully functional maze with a player who can move around. That's real progress. Here's what's next. In lesson two, we're adding glowing orbs for the player to collect and starting the core gameplay logic. This is where your game starts to get interesting. See you there.